Okay. Platform is product. Thank you all for coming. Um, uh, so this is a work in progress, right? Uh, we, um, uh, oh, right. So first thing, pardon? Don't know. Those are verboten. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, would you please, we're going to do uh, a quick fist of five. I would like you to raise your hand. Oh, nope. My bad. Sorry. Uh, City of Boston would like me to announce that. Uh, <laughs> note that the, the locations of your surrounding emergency exits, uh, find the ones nearest you, please. Uh, in the event of an emergency, please calmly exit to the public concourse area. Uh, the emergency exit stairwells leading to the outside are located along the public concourse and uh, follow the directions of public safety staff. Thank you. Um, OK, so no, I don't want to get to that yet. Um, Please raise your hand with a number of fingers, one through five, indicating how well you feel you understand product management as applied to a non-traditional product like a platform. So one through five, and I'm going to take your photo. We're, we're going to do just a quick, like, what do you think? OK. OK, get those hands up. Let's yeah, go. keep them up. Don't just, be shy. Yeah, and, and totally, totally. Uh, Vulnerable there. Okay. All right. So I, I saw some. I saw some pretty big numbers. That's awesome. Um, okay. So Pivotal customers have found a lot of value, great success in managing their Pivotal Cloud Foundry platforms as an internal product within their company. Um, and we wanted to enable the broader Cloud Foundry community to be able to apply product management techniques to their own platforms. And so we came up with this MVP platform. Sorry, no, panel as product. Um, our value proposition is we assume that delivering panel as product will result in better community product management understanding by measuring an increase in product management self-assessment. So we've got the before, and we're going to deliver panel as product, and we'll see the after. Uh, but to deliver a valuable MVP, we want to start by considering our problem space, starting with our users. So we're going to do a very, very brief uh, persona workshop. So please raise your hand. Uh, we, we have some assumed personas, because it would take very long to do user interviews and do a proper product workshop, uh, persona workshop. So we're going to do a quick survey. Please raise your hand if you identify as product management. Hey, we've got a few. OK, great. Um, and that's distinct from project management. So raise your hand if you are a project manager, a PMP, uh, if you are a Kant chart expert. OK, awesome. We've got some of those. If you're in application software engineering, you make like business apps or stuff, OK, got one or so of those. Uh, raise your hand if you're in infrastructure or platform engineering. Hey, all right. Yeah, I kind of identify as one of those myself. Um, are you an IT leader? Raise your hand. Yeah, oh yeah, OK, pointy-haired bosses, you go. Uh, and if you're in UX or design, are you wearing fancy socks today? <laughs> OK, oh, cool, really? OK, that's great. Um, raise your hand if you don't fall into one of those other personas, or if you feel like an outlier. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, Hannah. <laughs> OK, great. So we've got a smattering. That's terrific. Um, we're going to try to uh, deliver a panel. Um, I've actually got some stack ranked questions here based on uh, personas and such. Um, I'm going to try to make this as valuable as possible to you uh, so that our fist of five at the end looks a little better. Uh, first. Uh, panelists, would you please introduce yourselves? Oh, Kyle. That's me. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, so we're going to run through very quickly with a who yeah. are you, where do you work, yeah. what do you do, right. and what does your wanted poster say? Yeah, OK. <clears throat> so my name is Kyle. Uh, I work at CSA Insurance in Phoenix. We're a AAA insurance provider. Uh, we're a 100-year-old company, so we have lots of old products that need managing. Um, Let's see, what? I lead the uh, uh, DevOps and Cloud Platform teams. Um, that's where, who, I, and then the last one, the wanted poster. Um, so I, ga I gave a previous talk, and I, I described myself as a, as a uh, frustrated optimist that I'm struggling through trying to bring all the value of this platform as a product to people who are reluctant to absorb value. Um, so if I imagine my wanted poster meaning I'm gone, that will mean it would just probably just say patience ran out. That's probably <laughs> all it would say. Nice. Thank you, Kyle. Jay. 
Uh, I'm Jay Schneip. I am a product owner at Liberty Mutual. Um, right now, I'm focused on defining products and a roadmap for our commercial insurance group. Also, Liberty is a 100-year-old insurance company um, with a lot of the same pains that Kyle has. My wanted poster will say, disruptor of status quo. Nice. Kevin. I am Kevin Mackett. I am a product manager oh. at Pivotal, and my primary role is helping build teams that um, run Pivotal Cloud Foundry like a product, and my wanted poster. Um, I'd be wanted for uh, breaking processes that are there for processes' sake. Good afternoon, I'm Sean Keery. I am the Minister of Chaos at Pivotal. I, uh, as Kevin does, I go out to the customers and I help uh, enable people understand how Cloud Foundry can be run as a product. Um, my wanted poster would be wanted for brevity. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hey, I'm Clayton, uh, Cloud Native Midwife at Pivotal. Um, I, just as those last two gentlemen, uh, I go out to customer sites and help build platform product teams, um, applying this stuff in the field. Uh, it's very exciting. And my wanted poster uh, would say colors outside the lines. Uh, okay. So, uh, questions. Um, and I'm kind of directing this at uh, the folks that actually run their own platforms. Uh, Kyle and Jay, what distinguishes your platform uh, from a turnkey vendor product. Um, maybe we'll go with Jay first. Okay. Uh, when we introduced Pivotal Cloud Foundry, um, well, we've been on Cloud Foundry for over six years now. So for us, what was really important is to look at the platform and how we delivered value as an enterprise consumer of it, rather than what value it gave to us natively. So what we really started to look at is the user experience for the developer when they wanted to consume the platform. So how do they build and integrate with their pipelines? How do we integrate our enterprise identity solutions into the pipeline? Um, how do you make it easier for de a developer to get a vanity URL, which is painful? Um, so really taking a look at that end-to-end -end experience, and that value comes from what we build on top of the platform itself. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really easy to identify uh, the lack of value that any turnkey, supposedly turnkey solutions provide. I mean, the enterprise is full of them from API gateways to whatever else, you know, push button deploy code things, or gener I should say push button generate code deploy are nightmares. Um, so, you know, the, I mean, I guess the biggest value is the cultural impact it has in an engineering team, right? To take ownership and, and uh, of, of writing code, shipping code, monitoring applications, um, being closer to your customer experience, um, and being able to be more adaptable to shifting demand. Uh, so in my mind, the, the main value as platform as a product is that, you know, the, the app's value is really, you know, temporal. We, we don't know how long it's going to be valuable, that particular app. And so you need platforms that are, can respond to shifting demand very quickly, and you can change your mind on one thing the next day and not, you know, it's like, oh, we have this three-year commitment to this bit of infrastructure that we just bought, but the market went that way, and now you're hosed. To use a technical term, you're hosed. <laughs> okay. Um, so how do you know you're building the right thing for the right people? Uh, and I'm going to ask Kevin this one because I think he's got a neat technique. Oh, well, the, the most important thing is understanding who your customers are. So when we are working with platform teams, uh, these are a couple different exercises. One of the things I like to do is um, go through and build out personas. We do persona workshops and just understand um, exactly what kind of customers that we have. Uh, sometimes we look at individual developers and kind of different types of, of needs for developers. I did an experiment uh, in my last engagement where we actually set up personas as um, app development teams and just understanding what kind of things are important to them, what kind of technologies they may want to use, uh, and use those techniques to help inform the, um, the roadmap and the backlog. 
team. Uh, can you give us an example of uh, a persona or two? Uh, so I think one, an interesting one I was showing at lunch actually was the, uh, the cloud native Mavericks. So um, being a, a group of um, engineers that are in, a, um, in a, an innovation lab that they really want to have uh, just enough to, to get going and, and not have too much of a, a corral. Uh, we had a similar kind of persona that we wanted to differentiate, um, which was uh, just cloud native, not the cloud native Mavericks. And those were folks that um, wanted to know kind of a specific traditional way of doing things, have a little bit more informed opinion, uh, and understand what was uh, wanted from enterprise architecture and, and what had happened traditionally in the company. So they wanted a little more guidance and um, helped us define things like what, you know, gi giving them an account on the platform and providing them with a um, CI CD framework and giving them an example spring app that was opinionated to the specific customer so as, as a starting point. Awesome. So yeah, the, it's just a, a helpful exercise to keep up on the wall in the, in the room that everybody's working in, hopefully all together, to just remember who your customer is. Just the one thing that I really like uh, to ensure we're building the right thing is our uh, demos, right? Get, get your product out there, show people what you're building, and get them all into the room so that they can give you feedback immediately. Awesome. Yeah, keep those feedback loops tight. And I want to throw one more thing out, just because you had mentioned uh, MVP earlier, um, the concept of a minimal viable product. It's you build just enough to get your customer in the door. So we like to come up with thin slices of functionality, get it out before we've invested a ton of time into something, and get our dev teams in, in the platform for whatever the, the new feature, or whatever it is that we're providing, and really confirm our assumptions. So we want to make sure that you know, we're not going off on some, you know, six month project to build something and then it's not at all, well, my favorite line is that's exactly what I asked for and not at all what I need. So <laughs> we just need to, need to get the customers in the door as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, it's almost like we practiced this in order, but we totally did. That's a perfect segue. Thank you, dude. <laughs> uh, so Jay, uh, how do you measure that success? What, um, you know, how, how, do you, how do you determine the success of an MVP or you know, delivery? Do you, how do you measure value delivered? How do you gauge sentiment? What does what's, uh, what is, what is measuring success look like for you? Sure. So we've really started to look at data-driven decisions and starting to measure things incrementally as we deliver different value. Um, so for us, a real quick use case here is we so first started looking at the user experience. Um, and really, when we talk about a user from a um, PaaS perspective, it's our developer. They are our customers. We need to make that experience good. We need to keep them working on business problems and not platform and enterprise problems. So when we first measured um, the amount of time it took for a developer to come to Liberty, um, get the necessary IDs and access they needed to start building and deploying onto our PaaS pattern. Um, it took about 22 days. Um, we started looking at how can we start to cut that time down because our ultimate goal is to be down to deploying onto PaaS in a single day. New developer, no identity, um, just all they have is really an organization that they exist in. How do they start deploying? So we started with identity. Um, we started to introduce secrets um, into that same pipeline. Although there are different teams supporting that, they all come to the same um, console to start that process. So they're not going to one request to one team and then one request to another. There's a single point where they start and they really end there as well. Um, so we've measured that down. And over the past year, we have gotten it down to a day. For a simple use case, we can deploy um, new user into production in a day. That's amazing. That sounds like a startup. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Kyle's impressed. Uh, okay, so Kyle, what what, is, what does measuring success look like for you? Uh, yeah, a lot of the same, uh, a lot of the same measurements there. Um, <clears throat> I'd say, you know, from where our, our engineers are coming from, the the bar isn't very high. So, it, you know, it's. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of easy to beat, but we want to challenge ourselves, right? So 
Um, and obviously the platform unlocks a lot of that just kind of nature of the design, but uh, you know, the ecosystem we've put around it is important to us. So there's probably two dimensions that are most important to me. The onboarding process for teams. Um, um, so you know, as we onboard new application teams, you know, we're literally kind of, you know, starting a counter and seeing like how soon are they getting, you know, they should be in Slack, the right Slack channels, they should have the right access to, you know, PCF spaces and, and users and all that type of stuff. And so, you know, a pipeline should exist even if it's, a, you know, it, just a templated app in, in, the, in the build pack they're going to use or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we want that to exist, uh, you know, in a day, right? And so we're, we, we're, we're measuring that. And then as that, you know, pipeline expands as that team starts, you know, their environments are proliferating and they're getting to prod. You know, we measure that time from the package build time. So time engineer commits code, package is built to the, to the time it takes to land all the way in prod. What is that t uh, build to prod uh, KPI for us? Um, our most optimized pass of 38 minutes for, you know, from the build, all the tests to run deployed through all the different environments and into prod 38 minutes. So then we baseline that for that team and, and there's a, you know, monitoring alerts on that. If, if all of a sudden it goes up to an hour, you know, people are getting Slack alerts and like, what, why? Did you inject friction on purpose? Is it, is it, we're getting value out of it or is it, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, noise? Yeah. Um, so yeah, those two dimensions are what we pay attention to. Awesome. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cram this last question, and uh, was two, and I'm going to make it one. Um, if we could pass the mic back down, we'll start with Sean this time. Uh, what do you think is maybe the, nope, I'm just going to skip to that one. Uh, if somebody came to you and asked, hey, how do I even platform as product, what's the one thing you would tell them to start with? A t-shirt. <laughs> A t-shirt? T-shirt. Yeah. Awesome. Kevin? T-shirt branding, okay. <laughs> I, I would say start with knowing who your customers are. That's instead of building what's interesting or looks good on your resume or whatever, to like know who your customers are. Sweet. I guess I would say from an enterprise perspective where we know who the consumers are of a product like this, I would start with what are their pain points so you can start solving those for them first. Um, maybe I'll, I'll tackle it from another angle. I'd say in, uh, investment is, not, is a difficult, it, it's a new form of investment that enterprises aren't used to. Uh, you know, they, well, at least our enterprise is very project-based investment, right? And so you're like, go build this thing. And, but we're talking about a platform that enables to build all the things. And so it's a different form of investment that it takes, and it's a different makeup of people, you know, to know your customers. That requires a particular type of, of person to be able to do that management and some sort of engineering background to be able to navigate, you know, the demand. Is it like out of left field request from application teams? Um, so there's a lot of unique roles and, and, uh, and investment challenges with, with just calling it, a, I mean, Making stickers and the t-shirts, yes. But then I also need to hire people to staff that product in a way that's probably pretty, that is new for our enterprise and I think a lot of enterprises. Thanks. Um, okay, so uh, audience questions. Please raise your hand and I'll bring you a mic. Hi, um, my question is around the minimum viable product. How does one determine that? And you know, when we talk, when you're talking about rolling out slices of functionality, in terms of legacy infrastructure, you either had an ESB that worked, or you had an ESB that didn't, and there really was no layers of it. Um, same for an app server or a, a, a database. So I'm trying to wrap my head around slices of functionality. And I'd like to ask whatever panelist answers to try to keep it brief. Yeah. Uh, so the things that we think about when defining MVPs are um, what's the body of work that's the least amount that we can do that delivers some value. So how do we get our app team into the platform, even if it 
doesn't completely work. You know, we, we tend to look for folks who, uh, you know, are more interested in kind of being on the bleeding edge, obviously, but can they, like for an initial stand-up of the platform, it might be um, that they can push an app, but they don't have, um, you know, a lot of the services and things that they need installed, but just kind of confirm, okay, we can get an app in. And um, we also consider um, functionality and um, trying to exercise risk as early as possible. If we've got something in a, in a project where looking at where like this could be a problem. We want to try to exercise and mitigate that risk as soon as possible. Um, and another concept is we like to try to have parallel work streams as well. But to go to the specifics of your question, um, it would really be that instead of doing like a full blown high availability kind of situation where you can push to production and have everything ready to go, it's doing it in like a sandbox environment or something first. And we're gonna do kind of getting just enough to be able to get someone in, exercise it, maybe a very specific set of use cases, knowing that you know it's not gonna do everything that's needed for the whole enterprise. It's not going to be production ready to go. It's just getting them in and getting feedback from them and testing those assumptions, because it might be you know, something like if you're gonna implement some kind of a new mes messaging queue or something like that, and you go and build the whole thing out and say, okay, we're open for business, we're in production, and it's like, well, yeah, that kinda doesn't do exactly what we need, or, you know, it's a problem. Um, it's getting just enough in just the environments would be one of the, one of the recommendations. And great job, that's just enough of an answer. Who else? <laughs> Hey, so um, how did you guys uh, gain these skills? Is there any sub-community within the Cloud Foundry community for, for prod product management? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know that there's any sub-community. I'm very lucky that I work at Pivotal, and I have wonderful people who've been doing this at Labs for a long time, teaching me how to do that. Uh, I know we have a product manager's playbook. I don't know if that's public, but I will take a look, and if it is, I will post it up on Twitter. And if anybody knows about sub-communities, it would be Sean Carey. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can also, uh, John Cutler has, uh, is a, a great product manager. Um, you could follow on Twitter, uh, and I think he has a video about um, applying product management to an invisible, like an internal product. Um, who else? I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you were talking, you gave me an idea for another question. One is in product management, how do you view competition and prepare yourselves for it? And the other is, uh, we talk about failing fast. How do you prepare for backup recovery scenarios? Uh, is it different than in the non-PaaS world? Cool. I didn't, the first part of that question, what was the first part? Competition. competition. Yeah, I so. As a product manager for competition for your, your environment. Yeah. Yes, I, it's kind of a hard question to answer because I think competition exists at an enterprise among other projects or products. So it's a matter of making sure the right um, conversations are occurring when a team's making a decision on whether or not, for example, they're going to deploy to Pivotal or PC, Cloud Foundry, or if they're gonna deploy to something like Docker. So it's really getting the right folks in the room to have those conversations to make the right decisions for the application itself. I guess that's where I would look at competition from an enterprise perspective is understanding, you know, or do they even just deploy on AWS, for example, on an EC2 instance. And then from a business continuity perspective, it really depends on how you manage and build out your platform itself. Um, from a Cloud Foundry perspective, you could run it across multiple regions in AWS. You can run it across multiple regions in your own internal data centers um, and run things active-active or have a, you know, pilot or a warm backup to go to. We do both at Liberty. I can talk a little bit about the competition factor. Um, so <clears throat> there is that. Uh, in, I, I, I encourage it. Like if you, wanna, if you want 
to deploy on something else uh, be my guest, but I make the barrier to entry for PCF very, very little, right? And um, uh, now the barrier to entry to get to prod is much more rigor, but just getting them in the platform, getting to deploy code, very, very little. And what I've found is a combination of the, of the value uh, that they get out of the platform, the business value it provides, the ease of use, and the enjoyment they have in the platform, the demand drives itself, right? So we don't, we don't really lose those fights, you know, with no, nobody's banging down OpenShift's door because of the great developer experience, right? Um, <clears throat> so, although it exists there, and it's a, you know, it may be an option for some teams, uh, I just really put the power in the hands of the app teams, like, just try it and see, see if you want to stay here. All right, uh, wow. thank you very much. Oh, I want to say uh, more. Sorry, dude. Uh, that's a minimum, <laughs> minimum viable panel right there. Minimum viable panel. You have to be an advocate um, for the platform. <laughs> so if, if I could get a, um, a last, uh, an, a, so we have a before Fist of Five. Uh, we're going to grab a, an after Fist of Five. How well would you say you understand product management as applied to a non-tangible product such as a platform? Raise your hand with a number, one to five fingers. Product management for a non-traditional product. Okay. I saw some numbers go up. Good deal. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to early declare it and maybe it's successful. Um, thank you very much. Uh, oh, fancy. That's supposed to be uh, thank you hands. Um, <laughs> thank you very much to the audience for help us to, helping us to deliver this 1.0 of panel as product. Uh, thank you, distinguished panelists, for contributing your knowledge about product management applied to uh, a, a, a platform. Um, and uh, if you would like to continue the discussion, please remember that roadmaps, uh, as any good product manager knows, are conversations, not commitments, but uh, it, our, 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 we are road mapping to present 2.0 of this panel as product at Spring One Platform uh, by Pivotal in September in Washington, DC. And if you were to use the discount code up on the screen here or in the slides attached to uh, uh, the presentation on the website, uh, you, you get a discount to come to Spring One. Thank you very much.